Welcome back. This week I'm in a new studio. Just kidding, it's green screen. There's a huge mess behind me and I'm trying to hide it. But regardless of where I film or what's in the background, the real studio is down here in this closet. These computers and storage, the tools that I use to bring ideas to life, they all live down here in a plywood rack. It's a simple setup that's met my needs as a remote professional and hobbyist for the last 10 years. Sometimes though, when things work too well, they're easy to forget about or ignore. And I recently paid the price for this. It all started with a summer heat wave that pushed my old air starved hard drives past their breaking point. And one after another, three drives failed catastrophically taking my entire storage pool with them. As bad as that was though, I thought I was safe. I had a second machine running in my detached garage, my on-site, off-site backup. But that machine, which should have saved me, had also been neglected. <laughs> a year ago we had a power outage and I just never got around to turning it back on. You stupid idiot! And just like that, about a year's worth of work was lost. It was a total disaster. I replaced the failed drives and recovered what files I could. And this week, to ensure this never happens again, I'm going to design and 3D print a new case to increase my storage capacity and ensure I have space to expand in the future. All right, so this is the case for that backup server in the garage. As you can see, this is a 1U, Really tiny case, uh, great for a place like the garage where I just keep it out of the way. However, as you can kind of see, there's not really a whole lot of uh, room for activities in here. So we're gonna have to uh, add on to this case if we want to add more drives. I've got two solid states in here right now. One is the uh, operating system drive and then the other is going to be for ha apps or home lab stuff. I don't know. Other fun software. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, this is quite a small form factor. <laughs> In fact, when I was uh, trying to assemble all of the parts for this rebuild, uh, I came across a nice stick of RAM in the closet that I had not used yet. And I, when I put it in this system, I realized why. You can just see... With the, with the big heat sink on this piece of RAM, it doesn't fit. Yeah, it sticks right out the top. So anyway, it's not gonna be a problem with the new design. Essentially, all we're gonna do is build a four bay case that sits right on top of this and uh, shares the same mounting holes and everything else. So why don't we head over to Th Fusion 360 and take a look. I designed the case to the same dimensions as the original and copied the appearance of the front grille to try to make things look uniform. However, behind the grille, which is held in place with magnets, there are four three and a half inch disc bays. I looked into existing hot swap drive bay designs, but ultimately I couldn't make them fit. So what I ended up with was a compliant hook on the each drive bay to hold the drives in place and then a separate part with a pull tab for pulling the drives out. The, the connections will be made with these SATA power and data connectors making it easy to add and remove drives. There are fan ports along the back for 40 millimeter fans to pull hot air out of the case. The case was designed to print in this orientation completely without supports. I printed smaller versions of each of the features to test for fit and made adjustments as necessary until everything lined up and fit right. Since the case is huge, uh, around 800 grams of filament, I wanted to make sure I got it right the first time. Then at last, I loaded a brand new roll of PETG and hit print.
approximately 24 hours later, I had the cape. There was a bit of warping along the bottom, but it was otherwise complete. Then I printed the grill and dust filter. So here's a look at the cape. The warping is pretty minimal and doesn't seem to affect anything but the surface quality. <laughs> I have to call this out. This print looks like dog water. I'm really unhappy with how it turned out, but it's just too big to print again. So this is what we get. It's going to be function, not pretty. So I printed this with a pretty significant brim, but that still didn't stop the warp. I got a pretty significant amount of warp. However, I have, held, I have dry fit this onto the case and it does indeed still fit. So I'm just gonna take, the, uh, take a deburring tool and get this brim off of there. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Next up are heat set inserts, which will hold the SATA connectors in place. And then installing those connectors with M3 screws. So I've already gone ahead and connected the fans. These are just five, these are the five volt guys for Raspberry Pi cases. Um, and I've just, they already had uh, a bit of a plug on there and I've just connected some jumper wires, run that back to a little Wago. And then that's what I'm gonna connect to the power supply. On, on my power supply, the black and red produces 5 volts, black and yellow produces 12. Uh, that's how your devices get whatever they need, so um, I have one empty end, and I, oh, hopefully it's got enough juice to power some of these, uh, power all four of these fans. I don't know, we'll see. This is going to be interesting, so we should be able to just turn this up and over and set it down and now for the last uh the finishing touches here oh yeah look at that final check make sure fans are spinning and uh Drives are spinning and everything is spinning. So let's find that power button. Oh, it's way down here now. And with that last check, we're all set. Time to put this thing out in the garage. Now, if I head back into the comfort of my office, I can log into the server. I'm using TrueNAS, and I can verify that my storage pools are all there. And I can show you one of the coolest features on this garage server, installing apps. I have a handful installed already that I'm excited to play with, from automation to media management. Check this out. I'm running large language models on my NAS. I've downloaded a few models, but Let's load up DeepSeek R1 
and give it a simple prompt. Uh, tell me about space. Look at it go. And if we check out the dashboard while this works, we can see the CPU is really chugging. There's no GPU, so our performance isn't the best. But look at this. And it's running 100% locally on a machine that sits idle almost all the time. Hopefully this should keep me from forgetting about this server and its important role on my home network. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'm Roman for Diaz Creative Studio. See you next time, and keep creating.